The Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 1 The former treatises I have made, O Theopolis, whatever, however his name is pronounced, former is the Gospel of Luke, written by Luke. And we'll see later on uh, when Luke, when he joins Paul, starts speaking firsthand. But this will match uh, Luke chapter 1. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Again, this all matches what Luke had to say. I'm just reading notes here. So when Luke wrote chapter 1 to Theopolis, he said, Listen, we're going to put out the decree of everything in order, the life of Jesus Christ. When Luke picks up the pen again and begins another book by the Holy Spirit, he says, I'm going to begin the life of the apostles. So the book of Acts takes off where Luke finishes. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach unto the day in which he was taken up. Luke chapter 24. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So, Luke chapter, I mean, I'm keeping it messing up. Acts chapter 1, we're going to read what Jesus said and what happened to Jesus and what he did. And then from there, we're going to pick up with the Acts. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. When Jesus Christ arose from the grave, he showed himself alive. We read it in all four Gospels. Many infallible proofs. We've seen some of them in John. The signs. Forty days after the resurrection. Uh, when we come to uh, Acts 1, I don't know if it's the 40th day or the 41st day. But it's been 40 days since Luke 23. Luke 24. Into Acts 1. And being assembled together with them, the apostles, the disciples, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Stay. John 7:39. But wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, Jesus, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Well, look at that. Man, we're running back to the beginning of Matthew. We're running back to the beginning of Luke. We're running to the beginning of John. John preached in the wilderness. He that who, I'm not even worthy to bend down and unlatch his shoe. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost or with fire. Luke is telling us, disciples, wait. What John spoke of has not happened yet. Now, I challenge you. As we go into the, the, the Acts of the Apostles, I don't know how many chapters, let me just check real quick here. Um, 28 chapters. You will find the baptism of the Holy Ghost upon these disciples and believers. Now, according to what John has preached in the misinterpretation of religion, find me where they were baptized with fire too. It's not there. So what John has preached three and a half, four, five years earlier has now come to place. It's going to happen in, in Acts chapter 2. Now there were cloven tongues of fire, but not fire eternal fire those cloven tongues of fire are out they're going you can't find them and when we read john's fire we, it's everlasting fire it's eternal fire when they therefore were come together gathered together they asked of him saying lord 
Wilt thou at this time restore it again the kingdom of Israel? They're concerned. They forgot the talk he had to be nations against nations and all. They want to know, is Israel going to be gathered together again? Are they going to be rebuilt? Not after they rejected him. Not after their Messiah was crucified. Not after the fact that it's been 40 days and still the nation has not come to him for salvation. The answer is no. Not yet. I said no. Not yet. At the second advent, Israel will be gathered together with a very few raiment. Those that will believe on him. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. Well, when's the day of the rapture? When's Jesus coming? How clear can you get a book of Acts? Talking to the disciples, the one that followed him. The men, some of these men are going to set out and write the New Testament for us. Jesus said, it's not, it's not for you to know. Which the Father has put in his own power. The Father knows you just trust the Father and go about to do what I'm going to have you do. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I thought he breathed on him. I thought people believe that, you know, if you get the breath of God for the Holy Spirit. Read what 8 says. It did happen in John. But they're going to have to get the Holy Spirit again. So you can have God breathe on all you want, but you don't get the Holy Ghost, according to the Bible. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That is the commission of every Christian. You begin at home, your Jerusalem, your city that you were grew up in. Jesus did, didn't he? And they rejected him. So Jesus picked up and moved away. <coughs> you go into Judea. That's a little further area. I believe Florida is my Judea. I preach to my home area. I preach to my home state. I preach to my home family. I preach to people around me. Gone. Time to go. Move to Judea. Jesus picked up from his hometown and went throughout Israel preaching. And in Samaria, that's even further. That's stepping out of your family. That's stepping out of who you are. Another further advance. And onto the outer parts of the earth, that's going fully out. That outer parts of the earth, God is having me do that by supporting missionaries. I don't have to go, but... There I am sending people by the, what little money I give. Samaria for me is these videos are getting out. Outer parts of the earth, these videos are getting out. I don't care if you listen to five minutes. It's gotten out. I can give you a whole list of countries where the Bible is not allowed. And these messages are getting there. And when he had spoken these things which they beheld listening he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight so jesus is going to the right hand of the father and he's not coming back to the earth to the second advent you say well brother hayward the rapture you didn't read the, you didn't read the rapture correctly we go up, meet together in the clouds, those who have died and those who have, are still alive. We meet together, all believers, no non-believers. Then when we gather in the clouds, then we go see Jesus, who's a little further. The rapture, Jesus does not show up on the earth. He's not going to show up in your toast. He's not going to show up in the tree limb that you cut down with a chainsaw. He's not going to come to some little child in some third world country. We're going to see that. He is leaving the disciples. And when we saw the prayer of Jesus, he said, listen, I'm leaving them in the world. Father, you protect them. To get to be witnesses. 
unto me. That's why they didn't go with, with Jesus when he was ascended. That's why when I got saved, I didn't go to be with the Lord. And many Christians hadn't even started in Jerusalem yet. So they're talking with Jesus and he starts floating away or something. I don't know. A cloud came down somehow and received him. Do a study of clouds in the Bible. It's a very interesting study. Especially when Jesus departs. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, oh, ah, man, they wouldn't even blink, the Bible says. They were, I wonder if they were expecting some, just another miracle that he was going to do. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. I wonder if these are the two men who were in the empty tomb talking to Mary. You know, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm going to add my own thing here. You can throw it in the garbage if you want. But Pete, uh, James and John said, Lord, can we have, we can sit in your left hand and your right hand. And he didn't rebuke him about someone sitting on his left hand and his right hand. I mean, there's somebody that's going to be there. I wonder if these two men. These two men stood by them in white apparel. I believe there was two men that came in to see Lot. Three with Abraham, but one of them was God. Why would God send two? Witness. They could testify to each other. <clears throat> Which also said, Ye men of Galilee. Now, let's just think for a moment. If these two men were the ones at the tomb of Jesus, speaking of Mary, He is not here. He is risen. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye glaring, glazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Well, that's kind of interesting. If these two angels, they proclaim he's not here, he's risen, but he's coming back. That's a great message of these two men, if you're the preacher. As he goes to heaven, he'll be coming back. Second time it's recorded on horseback, angry, with the church behind him. But he's coming back. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. Like that's how far you can go. About 4,854 feet was what you were allowed to walk. Find that in the Bible. Find that in the law. Why did they come up with that number? How did they come up with that number? And they would. I've heard stories, and you know, they're probably just stories, but you know, the guy would take a bag for a journey, and he would measure out far he would go, and he'd you know, lean up against a tree or a rock and sleep there, lay there, stay there, until he can go the next day, his journey. But those are stories a dime a dozen. But there was a set journey that you could do on the Sabbath. So they returned to Jerusalem like Jesus told them to do. And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room, which is a, seems to be the meeting house of the disciples, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew and James, the son of Phoebus, and Simon Zeotes and Judas, the brother of James. Twelve names. Abode. That's where they lived. That's where they stayed. I thought Peter had a house with a mother-in-law. Where are they? Eleven? I know it says twelve. Oops, guess I'm wrong. Eleven names. Mark that. <laughs> These all continued with one accord. There's your Honda Accord showing up. Now they're going to travel around in the Honda Accord. In prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Oh, there's, there's Jesus' mother who John was given the responsibility to take care of. 
Now she, I think she shows up once or twice, but she has nothing to say. She has no authority. These would be Mary, Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene would probably be there. Joanna was another woman mentioned. Sarabi, Salome. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the brethren and said, the number of the names together were about 120. That's a lot of people. Men and brethren, this scripture was must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Now Peter understands. So Peter stands up in the church. Notice he says men and brethren. Not everybody in that room of the 120 were saved. Or followers. Brethren is different from men. So we're going to find out that David of the Holy Ghost spoke of Judas, 2 Samuel 20, 22, 1 and 2, 23, 1 and 2. Wow, my notes are terrible. Can't read more. Psalms 41, 9. Before concerning Judas, which was guide to them, the high priest that took Jesus in the garden. Now Peter understands what happened in that garden. He realized when Judas came up to Jesus, Judas was part of the whole thing. It wasn't just a friend coming up and comforting another friend. For he was numbered with us, one of the twelve, one of the twelve, one of the twelve, and had obtained part of this ministry. Everything they did, Judas did. Healing, signs, wonders, Preaching. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on here. Hold on. Hold on. Said he threw the money down, right? And said the priest went and got the field for the price of blood. Judas is recorded for that price. And we need to realize and understand it. Not because if I physically commit a sin. All I got to do is think about it. All I got to do is be part of that sin. Now, Judas did not buy that property, did he? He gave it up. I'm going to say something here. And you're going to hate me, but I don't care. When you take part of putting somebody in a political office and they do something against God... Your vote counts in the eyes of God for putting that man in the office. I stopped voting when President Bush I put into off part into office and he started messing with Israel. Remember the, you know the, the the storm and all that we were getting. I took part in the vote, the casting of lots for a man to enter into office. I was charged with putting a man in office just as much as Judas is charged for buying that land. And Judas didn't have nothing to do with it, but the money was his. Jesus said, whoever look upon a woman lust after in his heart has already committed adultery with her. You don't have to physically do it. So if you give money... Okay, you want me to get, I'll get back on money. If you give money to an organization, to whatever you give it to, and they support abortion or other sins, Judas bought that field too. And he didn't lay no hand on it. You better be careful where your money goes. He threw it down at the priest. That was his money. He threw it away, didn't he? And yet, later on in Acts chapter 1, the Bible records through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he has to give an account for that money he threw away, threw away. Literally, threw away. You'll have to give an account that money you throw away. 
wherever it went and wherever how it was spent. And fell, falling headlong, head first, I was, he burst asunder in the mist. He was ripped open. And his and all his bowels gushed out, his guts. So that's what most Hollywood movies will show you about a guy who's getting his guts, his stomach being blunk. There's another place that said he went and hanged himself. And if you read it correctly, it looks like that earthquake that happened when, when Jesus died. That when he hung himself, Judas' body fell and just ripped open. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, Asilima, however you want to say it, that is to say, the field of blood. And we read in the Gospels, that was a priest that did that. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate. Let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric, that's an office, let another take. Remove Judas, put someone else in the, in the position. We're going to see this happen in a minute. Wherefore, of these men which have company with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went, <coughs> excuse me, in and out among us, the entire life of Jesus, there were men that went in and out and joined and followed. This is one of the conditions for the apostle. You had to live with Jesus. You had to be part of Jesus. You had to be with his ministry. You had to follow him. <laughs> Beginning from the baptism of John, you had to be baptized of John to be an apostle. Kind of hard to do that in 2016. Onto the same day that he was taken up from us, you had to be present in Acts chapter 1 to see the resurrected Christ. Kind of hard for 2016. 21 and 22 are the qualifications for an apostle, and they must follow these qualifications, 21 and 22, or you're not an apostle. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? So I am not an apostle because I never witnessed the resurrection. I am not an apostle because I did not walk physically with Jesus. I am not an apostle because I was not baptized with the baptism of John. That rules me out. Paul follows these three things. Even as a Pharisee, he follows these three things. So that unpartable sin that we read about in the gospel, you know, you can't do it today because Jesus is not here working his miracles and you cannot accuse Jesus today of being working by Beelzebub. Like, I cannot be an apostle today. I cannot be credited with the impartable sin, and I cannot be credited as an apostle. It's impossible. And they appointed two, Joseph called for Sabbath, who was surnamed Justice. This guy has three names. Now, when did you ever read about this guy in the Gospels? And yet he lived, he worked, and he being with Jesus Christ can be appointed. Was there when Jesus arose from the grave, was there when he was in Acts chapter 1 when he ascended to heaven. And we hadn't heard nothing about this guy. And he's considered an apostle and he's up for the office of, to replace Judas. And Matthias, Matthias, another name we, didn't, we have never read about. And here they are, here's two unknown men that lived. Three and a half years with Jesus. Your name is not always going to be mentioned for people to see. Oh, look what Stella Hayward's done. No, may not be. There are plenty born again Bible believing Christians somewhere in this world right now. Nobody knows who they are, and God knows who they are.
and all oh, the rewards and the comfort they'll get the judgment seat of Christ. Lord, we've seen these people, the devils come around, and Jesus said, I've seen Satan fall uh, as lightning. You marvel at the fact is that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. These two names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship well he had to there's a qualification these two men had to fit from which judas by transgression fell and he might go to his own place well that's interesting a little extra info about judas now and they gave forth their lots. They shot dice. They picked cards. The, the, the longest straw. Pick a number between 1 and 10. I don't know how they did it. They put two men before God. In prayer. Say, Lord, we don't know which one of these two. Especially after concerning Judas, we had no idea. We need your help. Now, Lord, we're going to do something, whatever they did to cast the lots. A farmer gambles every year. When he goes to his seed bin and says, what am I seed am I going to plant this year? He gambles whether he's going to make his farm or break his farm. He's not going down to Vegas with $1,000 and just blow it all. He's not picking up scratch cards and scratching them up to see get a dollar here, two dollars here, and no, no money on that one. This is some serious casting of lots, of however they did it. This is not like the soldiers, well, we got this coat left, let's find out who's going to get it. We are in the ministry, we are in the beginning of a church, there are two men put before God, we don't know which one is chosen by God. I don't know how they did. And the lot fell upon Matthias. However you want to say it. The lottery. That's what it means. Lot. Lottery. You know where that word came from? Why lottery? It comes from the Bible. Lot. How's that? Play the Florida lottery. Get your lottery tickets. You're using a Bible word. Now, whatever happened to Matthias? I don't know. God said him. And we have no idea what he did. We don't even know what happened to Joseph. It's not for us to know. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So he becomes the 12th apostle. Right? So when you read the 12 apostles of the Lamb, the, the gates of the foundation, I forget which one. There's 12 uh Children of Israel, and there's 12 apostles of the Lamb. Is it Paul or is it Matthew? Sure, not Judas. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now, that was Jewish, would be he was one of the 12. One of the 12. You know what 1 in 12 is? 13. So now we see Jesus has gone. He has gone to the Father. He is seated at the right, right hand of the Father. And he's been there ever since Acts chapter 1. The apostles are on their own with the Holy Ghost. Hasn't yet come. And they're already choosing one man to step in the place of a man that, that committed suicide by his sin. And we pick up Acts. Acts is going to start off Jewish. And when we get done, it'll be Gentile. There are many true doctrines in Acts. But the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I cannot say salvation is Acts 2.38. But it was a salvation. It was. But it's not now.
Acts and Matthew are the two trouble books that people go run into for religion. If I were to have a church, I would never teach Matthew and I would never teach Acts. I wouldn't. I would not want to, I should say. Because I better make sure my congregation, the Lord ever gave me, or I better make sure the people listening, we're going through as a family. My family's well versed in the Bible. Because you can easily get deceived in the book of Acts. Go out there seek any any religion. Where where will they run? Baptism. That's in Acts. And Lord God, I just thank you. Lord, I love you.